Welcome to Brain Booster. Did you know the Statue of Liberty was first conceived as a colossal figure guarding Nubian tombs? This may sound surprising, but it's absolutely true. The sculptor behind this iconic symbol of freedom, Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, was initially inspired by these towering figures from ancient history. Bartholdi had a lifelong fascination for large-scale public monuments. His passion led him to design a monumental statue for the Suez Canal. This was not just any statue, but a robe-clad woman representing Egypt, intended to be stationed at Port Said, the canal's northern end. He titled his prototype, Egypt Carrying the Light to Asia. But as fate would have it, Bartholdi's ambitious project was set aside due to the hefty price tag. However, the seeds of an idea had been sown, and Bartholdi's female figure would soon find a new home in an entirely different part of the world. The design began to evolve, and the woman in Bartholdi's original design morphed into a goddess. This goddess would eventually be known to the world as Liberty Enlightening the World. That's right, the Statue of Liberty as we know her today was born from a design initially meant for the Suez Canal thousands of miles away from her current home in New York Harbor. But the story doesn't end there. Bartholdi's scrap design was not just an impressive feat of artistry. It was a conception of a figure that would go on to become a beacon of hope and freedom for millions. It's fascinating to think about how Bartholdi's vision for a Suez Canal monument transformed into one of the most iconic symbols in the world the Statue of Liberty, a figure that has welcomed countless visitors and immigrants to the shores of America, was born from a design intended for an entirely different continent. It's a testament to the power of creativity and vision, and how they can transcend borders and create symbols that resonate with people all over the world. So, the Lady Liberty we know today was born from a design meant for a completely different continent. Imagine this a statue with a waistline of 35 feet, standing 305 feet tall and sporting a size 879 shoe. This isn't just any statue, we're talking about Lady Liberty herself. Let's delve into the construction of this iconic figure. The Statue of Liberty is dressed in a layer of copper as thin as two pennies pressed together. When she first graced Bedloe's Island, her hue was a beautiful shade of brown. For about 35 years, this was how she appeared to the world, a towering figure of freedom in burnished copper. But by the time the 1920s rolled around, the copper skin began to oxidize, changing her complexion to the lovely sea green we associate with her today. The French government generously funded the statue itself, but there was a catch. The Americans were expected to raise the funds for Lady Liberty's pedestal, faced with pink Stony Creek granite. However, the task proved to be quite a challenge. The governor refused to use state funds. Congress couldn't agree on an amount, and a dedicated fundraising committee fell short by a third. As other cities like Baltimore, Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Boston started eyeing the sculpture for their own, a solution was found. Joseph Pulitzer, a name you might recognize, devised a plan. He promised to print the names of all contributors in his newspaper and offer rewards to the largest donors. In just five months, the campaign raised over $100,000 from over 160,000 donors. These included children, street cleaners, and politicians, with more than 75% of donations in amounts of less than a dollar. With this money, they could finally move forward. $100,000 covered the last of the pedestal's cost, and the rest was given as a gift to the sculptor. And just like that, Lady Liberty found a home all thanks to contributions from children, street cleaners, and politicians alike. Beyond its grandeur, the Statue of Liberty carries a profound message. A message that was birthed from the collaboration of three remarkable men in the 1870s. French abolitionist Édouard de Laboulaye, sculptor Frédéric Bartholdi, and renowned engineer Gustave Eiffel. Together, they dreamt of a monumental gift for the United States one that would become an emblem of freedom and friendship. Laboulaye, a staunch abolitionist, saw in the United States a beacon of hope, a nation that had emerged from the dark shadows of slavery into the light of liberty. He envisioned the statue as a symbol of this triumph, a beacon calling out to the world, proclaiming the end of slavery and the dawn of a new era of freedom. 
Bartholdi, the artistic genius behind the statue, was inspired by the colossal figures guarding Nubian tombs. His passion for large-scale public monuments found an outlet in the design of the statue. He shaped Lady Liberty as a robed woman, a figure that evolved from his earlier designs for the Suez Canal. The figure, titled Liberty, Enlightening the World, would become a symbol of freedom, her torch lighting the path to liberty. Eiffel, the master engineer, brought the statue to life. His innovative design made it possible for the massive statue to stand tall, a testament to human ingenuity and an enduring symbol of freedom. But the statue was more than just a gift to America. For Laboulet, it was also a message to his own people. As Napoleon III brought an end to the Second Republic in France, remaining in power past his term and declaring himself emperor, Laboulet hoped that the statue would inspire his fellow citizens to fight for their liberty. So, while we admire its beauty, let's not forget the powerful message Lady Liberty embodies. She's not just a statue, she's a symbol, a beacon of hope, a testament to the enduring spirit of freedom. Lady Liberty stands tall, her torch held high, illuminating the path towards liberty, enlightening the world. Ever wondered why you can't climb up to the torch's balcony? It's not just because of old age. It's a tale of intrigue and resilience from the era of World War I. On the night of July 30, 1916, German spies orchestrated an explosion in a munitions depot on Black Tom Island, not too far from Lady Liberty herself. The force of the blast sent debris flying, damaging the statue's arm and torch. The torch remained in this damaged state for decades, a silent witness to the ravages of war. It wasn't until 1984, almost 70 years later, that the torch was finally repaired. But instead of merely restoring it, a new torch was fashioned, this time covered in brilliant 24-karat gold leaf. The original torch, bearing the marks of its history, is now on display for all to see. So the golden torch you see today is actually a symbol of resilience, shining bright despite its turbulent past. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.